Hello everyone, today I have a very special Pixel Worlds video for you. Many of you know that as of Sunday, June 22nd at 7am EST, a secret world was finally unlocked, but first let me give you some backstory about this world. During January of this year, a world named Aid was spontaneously locked, meaning that you are not able to enter the world. Farminer discovered this and rose the question to Dev, and Dev told him that it may be an off-limits world, also using the F symbol, which at the time may have seemed like a joke, but in retrospect may have actually been a hint. Farmeyer asks why he can't enter the world, and Dev says F. More on that later. The perpetrator was endless, both locking the world as well as claiming the world, taking it from the player who had previously owned it. Later on, we realized that the Rift Worlds title actually spelt Aid when translated from binary into the alphabet. From that point on, Aid has been an in-construction project by Endless and potentially other developers. Fast forwarding to the pet update though, I started looking deep into the lore and I began lore hunting. Once I discovered that Aid was a special off-limits world, I would go to the world to Aid daily to check if it was still locked. Even on Saturday, June 21st, Aid was still locked. However, on the fateful following day, both Martel Play and Kind PW discovered that the world had finally been open for anyone to go and explore. Keep in mind that the Pixel World's lore hunters have known Aid was a part of the story for months. Some attempt to take credit for just finding the world to be unlocked, but I digress. If you've never visited Aid, in summary, it's essentially a lore-themed world focused heavily on the community coming together to untangle secrets about the game and solve puzzles involved with the lore. Now that we are all caught up, let's talk about the puzzles. Keep in mind that each puzzle contains a piece of a parody of the classic nursery rhyme, One Two Buckle My Shoe. The first puzzle has the rhyme, One Two Only A Few. The first puzzle required us, the players, to get through a short, two-sided parkour. One of each faction, dark and light, needed to finish the parkour and reach a pressure plate to open the bottom room's doors. This was allowed by a clan portal for each faction, leading to an electrosphere that opened every five minutes, letting parkourers through to attempt the parkour. To add to the challenge, a pressure plate beneath the entrance would trigger a laser in the parkour, killing all the players inside. Eventually, it was completed, and it led to the next puzzle. The second puzzle was much easier. It contained the rhyme, 3-4, reveal the lore. The objective of the puzzle was a series of levers powering lights that, if the pattern was correctly made, would open the password portal in the middle, as well as opening the sci-fi doors adjacent to the clan portals. Eventually, a short amount of guessing time, GG Enter managed to finish the correct pattern for the light side, and thus open the portal. Something to note, this room also contained faction-locked pressure plates, meaning that they required the correct factions on each plate to activate the faction lamps above the plates. The third puzzle took the most time to solve so far, and it was super frustrating to complete. First of all, the rhyme states, 5-6 knows the tricks. You see, this puzzle seems very simple. There are six pressure plates and six runes, each with a different symbol. From left to right, the symbols represent the Epic Power Suit, Superfly, Shogun, Frostborn, Nether, and the Tormentor. As well as wearing the set and being on the correct faction side, you have to get a Flame Shard in your inventory as well, which are about 10 to 20 world locks. For example, if you want the Frostborn light to activate, you need to be wearing the full Frostborn set, be in a dark clan faction, and finally you needed a flaming shard. Some of these sets contain some out of the ordinary set pieces need to activate the lights however, which is why they took more time to solve. The shogun set, as assumed, required all pieces of the shogun set, but also needed ronin hair to complete. The nether set required all pieces of the nether set obtainable from, da from the daily quests, however instead of needing the nether played, it needed the quick draw blades of the nether, a 12 to 13 platinum lock item. Finally, the epic power set took the longest to understand. As you know, there are five obtainable colors of the epic power set, and they all obviously have the same symbol as the rune, so of course all five colors need to be tested. As well as this, we weren't sure if you need the corresponding colored power helmet to turn the lamp on, spoiler alert, you did. Even after testing every colored epic power suit, including the helmet on and off, the lamp did not activate. 
Luckily, in the lore discord server, Evan Plays recommended that we could try the Key of the Deep with the epic power suit. Luckily, the first one to try activating the light with the Key of the Deep had the correct colored power suit. Lord FIFA donned the yellow epic power suit with the yellow power helmet along with the Key of the Deep, and the light activated. As you can see in this graphic, this is every single item in each set needed to activate the lights. Once we actually got all the sets together, the platforms finally opened. The puzzle we are currently going through may be even trickier than the third puzzle. First of all, the rhyme we unlocked states 7-8 shall open the gate. The scene is this, there are 8 runes, 4 light, and 4 dark. These runes can be switched around and changed, meaning we may have to put the runes in a specific pattern to unlock the first part of the puzzle. The objective of this puzzle seems to be to unlock the cryptic portal in the middle of the room. Because of the letters we are given, I believe that the runes need to spell out the word together in rune text. But just like the third puzzle, it isn't that simple. On top of having the correct pattern, to enter the room you must be level 125 or higher. People assume this is so new players don't mess up the puzzle, but I feel as though 125 may be too high of a minimum. And on top of that, just like the last puzzle, there are pressure plates on each faction locked block, meaning that you actually need to have something special about you, like the set puzzle. What do you need to have? Well, the rhyme almost tells us this specifically. Think about it. Only the few who know the tricks shall open the gate and reveal the lore. Even more so, it matches. Eight shall open the gate. Eight pressure plates, eight players. To trigger the pressure plate, you must have gone through a rift before in Pixel Worlds. It sounds crazy, but this is legitimately true. The only players that have been able to trigger the pressure plates have been players that have gone through rifts before. So to sum up, for one person to trigger the pressure plate, you must have gone through a rift, past level 125, and been in the correct faction to turn on said pressure plate. Because there are 8 pressure plates, we'll have to do this 7 more times, exactly like the set one, all at once. Some more things to mention. Once the third puzzle was completed, the world was fully unlocked for exploration, and we found some interesting text. First off, some sort of holographic hooded figure NPC tells us FOMO exceeds progress. In the beginning of this video, I told you I would come back talking about when Dev used the F symbol, and that it was a hint. F has been helping us throughout the game so far, giving us flaming shards to prepare us, telling us not to open a door in the rift world, so who is F? Well, some believe that this message is the answer. F is for FOMO. Though I do think that F is FOMO, I am not 100% convinced. FOMO itself is a social anxiety having to deal with the fear of missing out. In Pixel Worlds, FOMO is constantly among us, tempting us to play events, updates, etc. so that we don't miss out on certain experiences or limited items. Pixel Worlds seems predicated a lot on FOMO. Some complain that too much of the game is focused on limited items. If this were to be put in the phrase though, fear of missing out exceeds progress, I'm not sure what it would mean. The farthest stretch I could imagine would be the concept that this social anxiety of fearing potential missed opportunities to get items that will never return to the game is holding us back from doing the things we would have done if FOMO didn't hold us back, like pr progressing essentially. I may be reading too far into it, but tell me what you guys think. Other than that, F is the owner of Aid, meaning that F is also the owner of the original Rift World, because Aid is the name of the original Rift World just translated from binary into the alphabet. With this connection, I feel as though it can safely be assumed that the commander we hear commentating our entry into the game when you create a new account is FOMO. Keep in mind, the other voice we hear in the cutscene seems to be the evil professor of the superhero event. In the cutscene, he's referred to as Doc, but most assume he's the professor. In Aid, another sign by F is found. When translated into English, the sign says, in the beginning there was darkness, followed by 1 colon 1. Some relate this to the nether vendor as one of his phrases state ex nihilio nihil fit, which translates from Latin to English as nothing comes from nothing, 
meaning nothing comes into being without some sort of catalyst to cause it to. I still th have to think this one over. I, I don't really know what F's third message refers to, but I think it could just be referring to factions, perhaps. For example, the first faction was darkness, and afterwards the light came. Maybe the one colon one refers to the two factions. The final world text is blocked by a VIP door, which states, Rose of the skies, you will not be forgotten. I have no clue what this means at this point in time, even googling it I can't find anything, so I'm just gonna leave it to the other lore hunters. There is a password portal in aid, but no one's able to crack it, so we are still waiting on more information. There is a sprite for the lit cryptic portal, the one in the fourth puzzle room, and it seems like a controlled rift. My theory for what happens when we complete the fourth puzzle is that the cryptic portal will open, the level doors will open as well, and everyone will be able to enter the cryptic portal like a vortex portal. Once entered, it will lead to the rift world, and there will be the final puzzle along with the final rhyme, 9 and 10. In the rhyme though, after 9 and 10, you will begin again. Even in the movie series Nightmare on Elm Street, which uses a parody of the 1-2 Buckle My Shoes song, the same logic is used, it begins again. When we finish the puzzle, it seems clear that it won't end. Whether or not it begins again, as opposed to simply continuing, we aren't sure. But that's just a theory. A GAME THEORY! Thank you. See you later.